Hi, it's Rob Berger, author of Retire Before Mom and Dad. This is the video that goes with chapter five of the book. If you haven't listened to chapter four yet, I encourage you to do that. Watch that video. It explains how we created uh, the calculator that you see on your screen. It's, it's, it's fairly simple, but if you haven't watched the chapter four video, highly recommend that you do so, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below this video. And we're going to use the exact same calculator we created in the chapter four video. And for this video and the two that follow it, we're going to look at the three key uh, elements of really compound interest, what I call the money multiplier uh, in the book. And if we look at the formula, we can see that the three of them here, interest rate is one, how long we invest for is the second, and then how much we're saving. In this case, we're assuming about $2,500, which is 5% of a $50,000 a year salary. Uh, you'll see there are a couple of other uh, uh, elements to this that we added in the previous uh, video, but we're not going to use those uh, in this video. We're going to keep current savings at zero, and we're not going to change the compounding period. We're going to keep it at monthly. So you can think of the interest rate, how long we invest for, and how much we invest as sort of three dials that as we make even small changes to them will have a big impact uh, on our wealth and how much we accumulate and how quickly we can retire or how quickly we achieve financial freedom. The dial, if you will, that we want to look at in this video is time. So again, we've assumed 45 years, but what happens if we make some changes to that assumption? So let's do this. We're going to make a copy of this calculator. It's going to move it over here. Same result, all the same data. And now we can make simple changes to the time period. If you recall in the book, one example I gave was just changing it by one year. How much can that really affect the outcome? Since we're already investing for 45 years, that's a long time. Can one year down to 44 years make that big of a difference? Well, we can take a look. And you see, actually, it does. It, it, it shaves off oh, roughly $150,000 just from one year. That's just investing just $2,500 less uh, and you're just reducing it by one year and you can see the difference that it makes. It's one of the reasons I believe virtually everyone should start investing now, even if you have debt. Uh, we talk about that a lot in the book. And yes, there are a lot of factors to consider and not, you know, not every situation is the same. And there could be circumstances where someone really needs to tackle high interest rate debt first. But I think for most people, most of the time, it's critical that you start investing now, even if you start small. Now, in this example, we just looked at one year difference. Uh, as you can imagine, as the differences start to pile up, the numbers really uh, start to change. So we're going to copy this again. And this time, instead of just uh, reducing it by one year, let's reduce it by five years. As you can see, we, we reduce our, our wealth at the end of uh, this period uh, by uh, almost $700,000. So this would be, for example, if here we started investing, let's say at age 22, uh, and here, you know, we waited and we said, well, you know, we've got a long time before retirement. I don't need to worry about investing now. So I'm going to wait until I'm 27. Well, it doesn't seem like that should have that big a difference on your wealth. But as you can tell from the numbers, it really does. Uh, every year counts. And again, it's why I stress the importance of starting to invest as absolutely as soon as you can. And of course, we can make more significant changes to this number. Uh, let's say you've got 20 years and the number goes down significantly. Now, this may raise some concerns for some of you, particularly if you're in your 40s or 50s and you've got a late start. So there's good news and there's sort of, I guess, maybe less good news is how I'll put it. The first is this. The numbers are the numbers. We can't run from them. It's just math. Uh, and so if you have a shorter period of time to invest, either because you got a late start or perhaps maybe you're in your 20s or 30s and you want to retire early. And so you, you don't want to work for 45 years. Maybe you want to work for 20 or 30 years. Well, the numbers change. Now, of course, the time period is just one of the dials we have to work with. Perhaps the one 
that's the most significant that we have the most control over beyond time is how much we're saving. So we'll be looking at that here, just focusing on the time period. And the takeaway here is even reducing your investment period uh, by one or two years, let alone five or 10 or 20 years, can have a huge impact uh, on your wealth. Again, if you watched the chapter four video, you can easily create this calculator in just a couple of minutes, and then you can change the time period for yourself to see how it will affect uh, your specific situation, including, by the way, adding any current savings that you may have already uh, into the equation.